Abdul Kahar Bolki revealed his face for the first time on Tuesday at the Taliban's first press conference. He translated for spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid, but remains without an official title. His role is one of many still to be decided in the new government. The consultations are ongoing, and uh, of course it, it is going to be uh, an inclusive system. He said the talks include whether the capital will remain in Kabul or move to the group's birthplace of Kandahar. Bolki acknowledged Kabul airport remains a flashpoint, blaming the United States for rushing to evacuate thousands of people. We are in talks and we have a, a relationship, a working relationship of, uh, with the Americans about the security arrangement. And uh, the outside check posts are uh, in our control and inside is uh, under the control of uh, the United States forces. And they're in constant contact with one another. He acknowledged a lack of trust between people in Kabul and the Taliban, blaming it on the distance created by decades of conflict. It is very unfortunate for people to be rushing to the airport the way they are at the moment. I think it would have been much better because we have announced general amnesty for everyone, the security forces from senior to the junior level. And this fear or this hysteria that has taken place is unfounded. It's now been seven days since the Taliban entered Kabul, a move Bolki said its leaders didn't intend to make. The developments were so fast that uh, all people were taken by surprise. And uh, when we entered Kabul, and it was not pre-planned because we announced initially that we do not want to enter Kabul and we want to reach a political solution before entering Kabul uh, and uh, making a joint and inclusive government. But what happened was that the security forces left and they abandoned their places and we were forced to uh, forced to ask our forces to enter and take over security. Since then, there's been concern over how the Taliban will govern. In a press conference this week, the group said women will work shoulder to shoulder with men, but within the boundaries of Sharia law. The point of intra-Afghan talks was precisely that we come to, uh, uh, to uh, an agreement about what those rights actually entail. Sharia law is known to everyone and there's no ambiguities about the rights of women, the rights of men, not only women, but also the rights of men and children. And right now we're at a situa situation that, uh, that hopefully during the consultations there will be clarifications about what those rights are. The Taliban is also reported to have conducted raids on homes, targeted killings and harassed government and civil society figures. The Taliban denies the claims, but said it is investigating cases of criminality. Our foremost priority is as a uh, discipline in our own ranks and not uh, enforcing laws on others, but enforcing it on ourselves first and then uh, giving it as an example for the rest of society to follow suit. So we are the first ones and our members, members if they are involved in such things, will be the first to be prosecuted. Some Taliban leaders remain on international watch lists and under sanctions, including the group's deputy leader, Sirajuddin Haqqani. As the U.S. leaves Afghanistan and the Taliban enters government, I asked his thoughts on the term terrorist. Well, I don't think people believe we are terrorists. I think it's just the war on terror. It was just a, a term coined by, by the United States and anyone that did not fall in line with labeled terrorists. Bolki said the Taliban wants to move forward and hopes stakeholders, both domestic and international, can cooperate on common interests. As the group takes the reins of government, many Afghans will be hoping it can and will execute such a vision. Charlotte Bellis,